Hey, and welcome to another edition of the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. I'm your host, Dougie Almeida, coming to you from Simpsonville, South Carolina, where I'm uh, blending in every day. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, took a couple weeks off, uh, got some work done, and, uh, you know, who knows. But uh, we will have another show here in the end of August. It'll be uh, regular here on the show, Mr. Steve Mudflap McGrew. And uh, we thank Brian Dunkelman, who was the original co-host of the American Idol and comic friend and uh so we're gonna see the three of us gonna get together <clears throat> pretty much at the end of the month stay tuned for that uh but today is a great show and you know honest I, I even mentioned to everybody on the show today on the pre-show a little weird day a lot of crying today <clears throat> i don't know why the sorrow hit me hard today but uh uh i <laughs> you know it, it is what it is man and here we are so i couldn't think of a person to probably be more important for me to speak to today one because he's funny as shit number two he's a good friend of mine and b he is a man of faith i would say and uh, i think all those three wrap up perfectly in the trilogy of our guest today mr sean grant is with us today what's up brother yo what up dougie how you doing brother <clears throat> yeah you know i was i was i was uh it's all i was flipping through my intro there you know what i mean because like I mentioned before the show, it was, it was one of those weird days, you know, like I was just trying to keep keep myself in in a rhythm, you know? Yeah, so, uh, man. No, dude, I, and you're one of the people, man, I'm grateful. I forget how long I've been doing comedy, but like, <laughs> like I've, I've known you at least 10 years, bro, at least, right? Yeah. It's got to be. At this point. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that I get to reconnect with a buddy, man. Like we knew each other way back in the South Florida days. I've seen you all over the country. I'm proud of you. I love what you're doing in all these festivals, man, and killing the game. So, yeah, Thanks, man. I, I'm glad to be back, man. I, I was on the show. It had to be like four years ago, or, or maybe yeah. more. Yeah, I remember being yeah. waking up for a couple days with Doug a while back. Yeah, and I we're I think we were zooming at that time, or if not, we probably were in the studio uh, back in Florida. Yeah, I remember I was in a studio apart. I was in like. A tiny. That's how I remember the time frame because I. Yeah. Not that I'm in a bigger place now. It's not much bigger. But I got AC, you know, and so it's not as terrible. But I remember, yeah, I was in the back of a, a Mexican family's house, basically, it's like a one bed. Oh wow, dude! Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I'm yeah. glad you're in better. I, I'm glad your living arrangements are uh, much more apropos. Nothing, yeah. you know, nothing more important than that. Nothing more important than that, dude. I, like you know, I, I moved here to South Carolina. You know, when my yeah. wife passed, a lot of people are like, going to come back to Florida. I'm like, what are you, nuts? It's beautiful up here. You know, yeah. it's like quiet, no traffic. People are polite. They're sweet. You know, you know, my neighbors were bringing me food and all this stuff when all this happened and all the support. Well, yeah. Meanwhile, my wife's family was taking shit out of my house. That's another story. But um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to eventually talk about that, and, uh, yeah. uh, but not on today's show. Um, well, dude, I think one, one of the funny moments was uh, you were headlining the El Paso comic strip. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and Aiko Tanaka was there, right? Very funny young lady. She was your feature. So I got to meet her. Yeah. And, oh, and that was like my audition. That was my audition to, to get in front of uh, Bart there and see if I can get some work. Yeah, yeah. I, have you have you been back there? Or, or, I, that was a while. Once, back. once, dude. Yeah, that's a cool club. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, dude. It's fun to be there, man. Fun to be there. Yeah. Aiko's funny. She's Japanese. She's very, very funny girl. She, I can do my wife bit, and she first her first line when she gets oh, yeah. like, "Oh, so, you, so you met my husband?" <laughs> <laughs> I I love my that. Wife. that was great. Oh, dude. But dude, that yeah, was the no. first. That was there. There was a moment in that time, and I, I have a joke. It's called the wet fact joke, and I told that joke there <clears throat> that weekend when I was with you. Yeah. And to this day, it's the biggest laugh I ever got. Which happened, you know, the joke is a wordplay on wet back, wet back. Uh, uh, and I was nervous to tell that joke that weekend. A, because I'm auditioning, and B, there was like 200 Mexican U.S. military men <laughs> from, the, from the base, and I thought I was going to get my ass yeah. kicked. Uh, but I told the joke and it fucking killed. So uh, all part of it, oh, all part dude. of a, a, a weekend we spent together. You're badass, dude. You're fearless. Man. You used to uh, do Muay Thai, right? Is that right? Or some type of yeah. I know this uh, martial arts. So you ain't worried about it. Yeah, you know that's a good thing. Even well, I just had my knee operated on, so I'm a bit I, I'm not capable at the moment. If somebody anybody can kick my ass, so this is this is like the yeah, the eye of the hurricane. Where you can come up to Dougie uh, and beat my ass for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> my, my knees will just, just take man. out. My, 
Yeah. Well, tell I'll listen. Now they're all going to. Yeah, well, that, now they're all going to be aiming from the right knee, dude. And they're going to catch the oh, fucking left uh, hook or the. Or the I'm about to say, yeah, don't say so which we'll... knee it is. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> no, they, going for the I'll right give it knee. to them. I'll, I'll even let them. How, how about you, dude? Were you ever a fighter? I mean, you, you were you ever a fighter? Were you ever a guy who uh, got into confrontations much and had a you know go to fist to cuss? Had a you know. You know what? I I was in uh I would go to boxing gyms with my boy. He was a Golden Gloves champion, and he did karate too. Uh, my friend Joseph Floyd, um, Godfather, both his kids. I can't fight. I was too fat to box, um, because I couldn't make the you know weight discipline is a big deal in, in boxing. Yeah. Uh, but I would hold pads. And I would spar a little bit, uh, but I'm really good. Here's the thing: if you don't want to fight, you gotta blitz with your mouth. You gotta like motherfucker, yeah. like I, I do that yeah. really good. <laughs> and then people, yeah. you know, I go all out in the first. I don't let yeah. the confrontation build because now the other guys really like he's probably looking at me, analyzing, going, "I can, I, I think I can beat this guy's ass." But if you blitz and really bring it all at once, then they usually back down. And I'm pretty fast too. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, listen. Uh, and it, it, you have to do what you got to do. You know, I, I, similar to that. Like I would, since I was the confident one. If you, were, you know, you were the guy in there going, and I'd be, I'm the guy sitting in the back going, you know wait. what I mean? Like we're, 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 <laughs> when, we're, when this is when this is over, let you know. And but you know, I would, but my, to avoid confrontation, I would use humor a lot of times. I'm like, look, man. Uh, you know, don't make it. Don't make another bad mistake today. Besides the shirt you're wearing, you know, because if you want to go to if you if you want to go to blows with me, dude, it's not going to end well. I can promise you. It's not. You know, oh, man. I don't know have how fucked up I'm going to get. But... Yeah. Have I ever yeah, a heckler? Ever... No, a heckler that's tried to fight, like get physical with you, talking about a shirt or anything like that. <clears throat> nah, I had a, I had a comic, a fellow comic, this crazy attorney dude out of Palm Beach who was doing comedy for a while, and he. He was saying shit, and he started throwing my merch onto the stage. It was uh, in a Boynton what? Beach, uh, Lake uh, Lake Worth. It was a show in Lake Worth, and um, oh, yeah, the guy who started throwing my shit on stage, and he came up. He was like a tall. He was he was really he was psychotic. The guy was you know fucking had issues. So he came walking. He came like six three, tall guy. You know, he came he came like sto- like walking towards the stage, and and I basically took the uh, mic stand. I had it like you know you hold it like this, <clears throat> but I basically <laughs> just kind of did a little. <laughs> I just kind of did a little. <laughs> You know, and like, Ooh. like if, we came, if you would have came up out of El Caban, you know, like just just yeah. like that ass out. <laughs> yeah. that melon, homeboy. Dang, <laughs> you got crazy. something to say? What's up? Think, think about oh, the man. think about think about some of the comics who got on stage. You know, Ariel is a young comedian out of Jersey. She was the girl who got yeah. the beer can thrown at her by a fucking MAGA uh, type person or, or uh, you know Trumpy in the audience in Jersey, and she ended up getting on the uh, you know on uh, Kimmel. She ended up doing uh, getting a spot on Kimmel from that uh, oh, that man. interaction. Wait a minute! Now you got me having yeah. ideas, man. Somebody need to get my ass yeah. kicked. Uh, <laughs> 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 somebody throw some water at me or something, man. Shit, I'm, I'm about to stage it. <laughs> yeah, did you see Cardi B get pissed and throw the mic at the? Uh, did you see that? Oh. Uh, that just came out too. Dude, she did that like two nights in a row. The first night she hit her DJ for playing the wrong song, and then she hits a fan, man. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, hopefully, you know, shit, to get some money. I'll take that. I'll take. Yeah. It sounds like it hit good too. It sounds like a boop, like a like a Chris Rock mic drop, like a really hard. Yeah, it, it, it was a it was a thump. It was a thump, and yeah, you know, and and everybody kept talk. Everybody kept talking about how she was obviously lip syncing because she kept you kept hearing her voice on on the on the <laughs> coming oh, through the speakers. Uh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah, are you a Cardi B fan? Are you a Cardi B fan, Sean? No, I like her ass. I don't know her music that much. I think her, her yeah. ass is great. I think that's part of it. I think most people like her ass. I, think, uh, I don't know if it's yeah, I mean, she's not, a, not that it, it matters. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, let's all assume let's all assume it's real. And uh, I will agree. You know, obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously a body that would be, is built for speed, as my one friend used to say, uh, you know, which meant, yeah. you know, pop, 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 pounding. And uh, <laughs> definitely. And, and you know what? I, I've always, I always like, I always like the person that comes from nothing to something. So from a stripper, yeah. you know, to, to a recording artist, God bless that jump. But, uh, but uh, yeah, there's, there's something missing there. I, when you, you know, make it, when uh, you assume you make an ass out of you and Cardi B. That's you right. That's the new saying. <laughs> yeah. And you end up with a fucking microphone yeah. on your head. Um, yeah. Well, absolutely. 
yeah, listen, there's a lot of people. I had a friend that told me she was worried about that. Like, you ever get attacked? Like, you know, I mean, do you worry about that? Do you, do you think, uh, do, I have to, do I have to actually, pre- you prepare? Do you mentally get prepared in case somebody comes up on you? No, luckily, man, 18 years of doing this shit, nothing. I did have a guy at Swamp Grass Willies. I don't know if you remember this spot. Uh, this lady named Treese used to run it down in South Florida. Um, artist Treese. But yeah, some guy, um, you know, but I never felt endangered, but he walked up to the stage and big biker dude. And I was messing with them because they were talking in the back by the bar, you know, and I didn't think they could hear me, but they were disrupting the show a little bit. <laughs> but I had enough of the audience to where I could mimic, like lip sync their conversation and right. kind of get this crowd into it while not, you know, not, not making them shut up. So I was just like, you know, saying stuff like, Oh man, I can't wait to get out of here and have sex with my sister, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm mimicking <laughs> their, and it looks like the conversation they're having because yeah. I'm matching their yeah. energy. And one yeah, of them, brilliant. without even breaking, he just like turns, like, he, I didn't think you hear me, turns, walks to the stage, picks me up by the shoulder, Uh-oh. and puts me down. <laughs> and that was it. But he, he started laughing. He just picked me up, and then I froze. Nobody did nothing. It was black people, everybody. And then the joke after that was like, <laughs> why didn't y'all help me? Like, what was wrong with y'all? You know? yeah. And then I made fun of the black folk because black people won't help me. They'd be like, well, he shouldn't. I didn't tell him to do that. You know, I, I ain't he, must him <laughs> he must have been intimidating. He must have been intimidating shit. Uh, uh, or you thought it was part of the show. Now, now that's interesting right. that, you know, you were, you were in that moment where now a big man's coming to you on stage. I'm going to share another story with you. It involves Cisco, actually, the comic of a, of oh, a potential yeah. big scene. Yeah. And, uh, same thing, similar. Any rate, so and, and you, but the man came up to you and put his hands on you. You didn't like, you know, like what the fuck? You didn't slap him. Right. You just no, let the man. No struggle. You know what? It was like because I looked in his eye. It didn't seem like he was. Uh-huh. I've been in fights before that, and it seemed like he was there because he picked me up. But it was like almost like he hugged me a little bit and put me yeah. down. But the hug was just he was big, like you said. Like I'm on stage, okay. and he's big yeah, enough well. to be like. Just like, you know, like a foot taller than me or like half a foot while I'm on stage. Not a big stage. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. pick me up, man. And but for some reason, I never felt hmm. like if he had been rushing me or if I felt, yeah, yeah. I don't know, you, you know, when you're on stage and you just feel like you're in a zone, like you can sense energy in a way. So I didn't feel in no. danger for any reason. I just yeah, felt you, like. You, you did. You, you you read you read you read the like the mannerisms. You know what I mean. Uh, you you didn't you weren't racist and go look at this white cracker ass fucking you right. know uh, hill, hillbilly motherfucker going to try to come at you know and, right. and, and, and think he's Rocky. He thinks he's Rocky. You know and he's going to be <laughs> Apollo Creed tonight. And you know but right. you, you you sensed you looked through and said ah this guy's just you know what's he what's he going to do. You just had that feeling. Right. And it actually helped the show because it gave that rant. Like everybody was quiet. Even the bar quieted down. What the hell is that? And <laughs> That's there's funny. always some moments like that in a show. Like you can hear when a comedian may or may not capitalize on it, but it gets quiet. Yeah. And it's a way that a show can either turn for the better or turn for the worse. And that was kind yeah. of the lesson there. I'm grateful that because some comedians, like you said, would react in panic. And right. because they're not in tune with what the with the vibe of the room they're just gonna you know and fear and 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 all that's gonna make Mm. it awkward but you know yeah uh, uh, that's why we do this to not make it awkward yeah you know and and two things one as a comedian yes uh definitely and two as a producer it's great when people can keep their composure uh in a moment Uh, like that and that's why you hire people with experience uh and you know and who have been around you know uh yeah. yes sir sometimes yes, a lot of times sir. comics say hey how come you how come i don't get booked on the show i'm like well because you some guy may come and try to pick you up and you won't <laughs> handle it like sean g did and well, just let the man, man hold him and you know dude everybody who yeah. i meant or who i try to talk to i'm like look dude this is a job yeah you might be funny but you have to be a pro there's a difference between a professional and a <laughs> funny comic there's some guys who are super funny right but they're not yeah. professional for many reasons one they they may not, you know, be on time, that type of stuff. And they may not, um, you know, just the basic fundamentals of being professional. But above mm-hmm. that, even like how you react if the show's not going your way. Do you shit on the right. show? Do you shit on the venue? Do you take the whole show down with you? 
or you stay a pro, realize maybe I was missed book, you know, or maybe so, who knows, right? right? Like I had Dave, you know, somebody wanted a clean show. It was a buddy of mine having like a wedding. Oh, Dougie? Yeah, we're good. I'm here. Oh, we're good. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was a buddy of mine having like a wedding thing, a wedding thing. Um, and I hired Dave Williamson, but the crowd was like these older black ex-gang member dudes and uh, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> And, you know, some family, some kids, but of course Dave is clean and all that. So that's why, but Dave, maybe they weren't vibing at first with what he was saying or, or his, who knows, right? Like it could have been like, they just weren't connected to him because of their own assumptions about who he might be. But then after a while, he yeah. started getting them because he started, he kept going, wow, you guys are great. You guys are great. And it was in a park. It was a terrible situation. I have apologized to people yeah. over that. Good time. But the, <laughs> yeah, to outside, watch him. Outside venue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. People walking by. It was horrible. But to watch him be a pro and just make the yeah. audience eventually catch up to him. It was beautiful. Yeah. You have to. You know, um, I had a comic years ago. We thought it was. I call. I always called this kid the most overrated open mic comic in the country. But he, uh, uh-huh. he, he never get word. And his name will never pass again on my vo- my list. But you know, he he did that. He did that in one of my rooms. He he was eating he was eating shit on stage, and then he turned to the crowd like, "Oh, you're all all gonna die anyway. You don't know it's, you don't know uh-huh. funny." And and me and the owner looked up at me. I'm like, "I know. <laughs> what can I, uh-huh. what can I tell you, dude? Uh, yeah, you, you reminded me when you're talking about you know the guy coming up to the stage. I did a comedy I did a comedy show, Wise Guys Comedy Show, at a strip club in South Florida. Which, yeah, the, the, you I mentioned that producer. There's a few. There's a few deal breakers right off the bat when somebody says, "Hey, I have a venue. I'd like you to book like a show." Two, two, two deal breakers. Uh, uh, one, all I'm still dealing with, but uh, intermission. Like some people want to have an intermission uh, on the show, and, and or two outside venue. You know what I mean? Outside right. venue. Listen, especially when I was in Florida, I'm like, <laughs> what are you not? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't we? What else can we add to the potential? You know. Anything oh, that can fuck like, this thing up, you know, getting a comic yeah, to fly yeah. in, you know, I'm going to fly <laughs> comics into an outdoor venue in Florida. What could go wrong? Oh, so, dude, uh, dude. yeah, but so we, I, I did I, the, I did the strip dog. club. Oh, yeah. I was like, so at this club and Cisco was headlining it and there was a stripper hey. girl. She, she did comedy. She did a, she did comedy for a little bit and then she came out in Daisy Duke shorts. So she fucked with, it. but basically there was members of the Celtic motor club, bike club, like, you know, like Celtic, like a fucking biker biker gang, like eight, oh, okay. nine fucking huge dudes just there. There's like 15 people. Half of them were the biker gang. And Cisco pointed at one of those big dudes who wasn't having sleeves like, well, you're fat. You know what I'm talking about? And oh, well, fuck, there you go. Like they, they all looked at Cisco like he ain't fat, motherfucker. You're fat. <laughs> you know, like you can uh, tell a biker guy is fat, you know, dude. And they eventually uh, got up and they were pissed and they were moaning and shit. Same thing. Those guys are in the area between the strip club and this private room where we're doing the show. And they hear, uh, uh, and they eventually, uh, no, uh, you know who was on the stage at that point? Was, uh, 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 has a big nose and Florida plays a guitar. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll cut, he was headlining. Cisco just came up. So they come back. They, th- this guy's like making fun of the, the biker dude. Like, what was the matter with that guy? Why was he pissed? You know, all this shit, you know, uh, calm down, Tim. What's the matter with you singing a song? And, Right. And then the guys outside hearing this shit, just him and his buddy come back in, fucking two Celtic gang members, Celtic jackets, you know, vests, and I'm and I'm in the audience going, oh, here we go. Dougie's gonna have people are gonna have to witness, you know, Dougie full, full outright, you know, survival mode because I'm gonna have to take, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take these big ass badass guys down. It's gonna be a fucking, it's not gonna be a fun night. So yeah, they, this, yeah. these guys walk up to the stage and, and uh, I, I don't know why it's blanking on me in his name right now. It'll hit me, of course. But he's on stage. He's playing his guitar and he's got a big nose. And it's kind of funny guy. And, he, and he's funny. guy. And, he, and the guy, biker guy comes up and goes, oh, you think you're funny? He pushes the mic stand, hit the, pushes the mic into the dude's face. Like, Pfft. and I'm like, oh. I'm standing there like four feet away, like up, standing up halfway. Like, and I'm like, and then they just walk away. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. you know, oh, so it, it blew geez. up. It was a, it was a whole big mess. Uh, I was threatening to call the police and the owner of the clubs mob mob guys like uh <laughs> no police cool. but nevertheless oh, that's right, what happens right, right. um so uh damn dude yeah man this is a 
you know what? And 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 I get it. Like that's messed up, right? And and this dude didn't deserve that. Really, Cisco should have got it. That was fine. <laughs> I love Cisco. Nobody, <laughs> nobody should have got the ass split. Right? <laughs> 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 Fucking Cisco. Oh my god, this dude. He was gone. But somebody got his ass whooped. Uh, but yeah, man, I would say you know it should keep the comedians honest in the sense that you, you know what we do. We're getting up in front of a mob basically right yeah. and at the early stages of comedy that's what it was you get you know they call medicine shows back in the old south or whatever the old west and guys would get on they perform and people gather around the wagon and they buy the medicine right like a lot of even black acts where we got big you know williams and walker all these other yeah guys. so yeah i mean but at the end of the day they can back then they could tar and feather you they didn't like your act or, or you know whoop your ass or worse right but i feel like yeah. many people find safety in comedy who shouldn't be doing comedy because they don't feel like it has that danger element right like they're just doing it for themselves and for therapy and which i mean there's nothing wrong with that if you find the right yeah. things for that great but as a professional once you're stepping into these situations and you don't know how to handle them professionally you be putting yourself in a lot of danger man and apparently other people i mean yeah. cisco the professional this is a crazy, crazy night's happening to everybody. It is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, the the motivation to want to keep the crap because there's some guys that's coming like a wrecking ball. They want that kind of shit, or damn near. Yeah. You think they want it because they create that kind of energy in the room. Yeah, and, and but there's there's the people that can do it. You know that are real like the crowd work. You know, like guys like a Rich Voss that can fuck with everybody and they love it. Oh you know yeah. I mean? And, and you I mean, feel that guy like, like it's that a show can, still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, he called the woman one time. She looked like a like a like a homeless poor gypsy, like <laughs> like an ugly like not not a, a not very good looking homeless gypsy. Or something he called her like that, and she was like, you know, but she she came up after him to talk to him. Like that's fucking Voss. I mean, you know, I'd say that the girl's gonna be writing a oh, that, that one fat comic was a was an asshole um, on the comment card. Never gonna be back at that club again. All right, so let's do, let's get into the let me ask you. This is a segment where I'm going to go over oh, some questions with you, and you can answer them. We can talk about it. Some things are kind of happening, and, you know, just like the, here with Sean, uh, Sean Grant has to say, uh, uh, do you believe in aliens, and if so, how close are we to them landing and just fucking, you know, saying, all right, we're here? You know what? Let me be cool about it. All right, so the short answer is no, but I don't disbelieve in them, right? Like I, I've had right. too many conversations, driving with comics, to where they're just trying to convince me and show me this stuff. And I'm like, all right, dude. Like, and I do want to get your opinion on this, Dougie. But my thing is, because because a lot of people know I believe in Jesus, right? And people are like, how you gonna believe in Jesus? You don't believe in aliens. And I'm like, dude, for, what, <laughs> believing in Jesus helps me. Like that helps yeah. me. What does the what does believing in that do the aliens believe in you? Are they talking about yeah. you? But even if they do exist, I feel like we're getting to the point now where Let's say they come and they join our society, right? And, you know, we'll get so used to them so fast that it won't even be a story for a month, dude. Like, we, I think there yeah. was a guy doing a Senate hearing about UFOs and nobody gave a shit. Like, I, I was like, hey, doing a show that night, like, guys, apparently there's a dude, like, nobody heard about this? And everybody was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, the whistleblower, the, the whistleblower for right. the testimony that, of, that we actually have alien you know, like Roswell really is a true story, you know, like, uh, yeah. uh well, I, I, listen, I do believe in, I do believe in Jesus like yourself. And I love the analogy, yeah. of course, you know, b believing in ET doesn't help you as much as it helps in believing in, you know, in, in, in the true Christ, uh, you know, and if you don't, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, I do. Yeah. And, uh, you know what I mean? And, you know, but I also, listen, not only do I believe in aliens, I think they're here. I think, I think, I think, yeah. uh, you know, I think the current administration is infiltrated with lizard people. Uh, I think there's a few different ones. You know, I think there's a few different ones and they're actually brokering for this land, just like China, America is trying to get the, the polar ice caps, Russia, you know, right. there's aliens going, we want that spot. Fuck you. It's ours. You know, that'd be funny. You know, next time we get together, you and I should dress up with whatever we think an alien looks like and we should fight right. over Baltimore, but fight over Baltimore. We're, who's going to get Baltimore? Oh. Which one of us? All right, which one of us? Um, <laughs> yeah, oh my god, no, and I, I'm with that. I mean, look, and some people are like, Well, why is it in the Bible? How do you believe in the Bible? Look, the Bible's a story of people, 
So there could be aliens. Right. Like who knows? Like yeah. he just wasn't. It's a different Bible for them, I guess. Like it's a. Yeah. It's not even a story of God. God was, and so then who knows? There could have been other universe. The whole story is about people and our journey and shit like that. Right. So yeah, our portion. Totally be aliens. Totally be aliens. Yeah. Who knows? Well, ancient ancient alien theorists theorists would say yes. Uh, I sure. love that show, Ancient Aliens, and you know they have you know there's depictions that you know I love some of those things like it's clearly a, a, an alien with a breathing <laughs> apparatus. No, maybe it's just a guy wearing a head fucking thing, you know, like a, like feathers. Oh, you know, yeah, maybe it's that's a what really it is bad too. artist. Like a he doesn't <laughs> yeah, know how to... <laughs> What do you what do you want me to do? It's not like it's I have like, like a scripto pen. <laughs> You're like six years old and shit. That's just fucked up art that somebody made at school and gave to his mom. Exactly. He's, he's using a petrified. He's using a petrified turkey <laughs> feather and a fucking like brick, you know, rock, you know, to carve this fiction. Give, give the guy a little, you know. That's yeah, funny. Slam, um, yeah, uh, I am. Uh, I think it's funny too. Uh, it's on. It's actually this isn't funny. I mean, you live in L.A., right, Ari? Don't you live somewhere in California? I live in Inglewood. Yeah. Uh, black yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got, I got you. Um, I, 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 it's unfortunate, but I'm writing this thing. Uh, it's, it's more of an opinion piece, but I, I'm going to try to get comedy, but, uh, the modern day ghost towns, uh, the next modern day ghost towns of which San Francisco, LA, Portland, uh, Seattle, uh, there's basically some areas that are the potentially going to be in that, in that situation. Oh, wait. So it, you know what? I thought, my bad. When I read the copy, I thought it said modern town. So a modern ghost town. Wait, oh shit. Yeah. What does that like mean? a modern day ghost abandon? town. Oh, no, there'll be a lot of homeless gonna... people and, and drug addicts uh, and just basically, you know, oh, uh, yeah, there won't be any us. businesses, you know? Yeah, that's basically, I mean, if you go downtown, man, it's, it's like they have their own world, the homeless, you know, like, yeah. but it's almost in a way more not more organized but it's organized like they know yeah because it has to be because they don't want to you're, you're almost safer parking around you know where a homeless encampment is in some ways because like they want to make sure that nothing happens to your car because the police know who to harass who lives in this area it's zoned off in such a way that man some of these tents dude they got generators in them they got, yeah. like, you know, it's, it's just an outdoor living situation, damn near. They have their own systems of barter, and they party. And I had a homie, I don't know if you ever met this guy. His name was Big Sonic. He was a comedian. But he chose to be a transient. He's somewhere in Ohio. because really? Yeah, he's locked. he got locked up at some point. Dude named Bernard Dabney, and I thought he died or something, but he's alive. Somebody found him uh, through, like, an inmate located thing. But yeah, mm -hmm. he just straight up, he was a decent comedy, he had good jokes and stuff, but he started saying like weird stuff, and I don't know, I was going through stuff, yeah, you know how it is, there was a little bit of grief in my life early on, it was my first bout with it, uh, you know, not to, yeah, yeah. but I, I just didn't know what I was, I, I wasn't listening to nobody, like, I was like, okay, right, man, right. and uh, I, I'm, I said, I'm gonna go off the grid, okay, I didn't know what that meant back then, but yeah, he's gone to the point where his family started contacting me some years later. Like, have you heard from from this dude? And I was like, I don't know. And then, you know, so that's I kind of made an effort to figure out. And he's out there. So some people like this shit, man. They like being, yeah, you know, in that world. I guess. If, if you've never been in that position, the first time I ever sold a home, like I had a house, and I sold it, and I basically rented an apartment on the beach for six months in Pompano or some shit. And I, the minute I relinquished oh, myself from ownership, like the bill, like the electronic bills, like it was one, the rent. I didn't have, uh, you know, the, the exterminator, the electric, the cable, the, the, you know, all these other things, these albatrosses of things, you know, that keep you uh, bound, you know. And But they were right. talking about how they're, you're right, it's so organized that people are like, hey, if you want to party, get free drugs, get a couple meals a day, uh -huh. not not have to work you know, sleep whenever you want, do whatever you want and come to California and be homeless, you know, the, you know, <laughs> taken care yeah. of. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, beach. hell yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that's the thing, the idea that there are a lot of go, these, these places are eventually not going to be a, a place of commerce. Businesses will leave, but it'll just be uh, ma eventually, you know, it's, it's like the opposite of gentrification. It's, Junkification, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, fucking, <laughs> yeah, junkification. Um, 
All right. So my next question for you, sir, is uh, would you trust a self-driving car? Would you would you if you're in a car and it picked you up and there's nobody behind the wheel, would you would you trust that? Are you okay with that? Um, not, not more than me, but more than my wife. I can't sleep when my wife is driving and shit, man. I can't, I can't really see when anybody's driving me. Like I can't, but I, yeah. I feel like if I could blame, if, if, the, if I could blame Elon Musk, if I just, if the, if I get my, you know, if I get fucked up in this car and I'm getting a paycheck from Elon, then I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm, I'm relaxed. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, well, I mean, hopefully it's not going to be a fatal crash. It's not nothing crazy, but at least, and that's the weird thing too, because you can't even brace for it. Sometimes I watch these car chases on YouTube, dude, and you yeah. don't know these motherfuckers running red lights, trying to get away from the cops. So it's not the car's fault, but at least when you're driving, you can kind of brace for that shit. You kind of maybe see impact coming or something. So that's got to be, yeah. yeah, I guess it's still got to put your seatbelt on or some shit. But have you been in one? I ain't got the money like you. I got a Prius. I got a Prius. I'm very proud of my Prius. But yeah. I don't know. You yeah. Got a Tesla? It, it, no, I don't have a Tesla. I, I, I have an Acura and a, like a Jeep. But, um, yeah. but you, you, here, two two things. You're right. Um, you know, uh, first of all, as for bracing, is sometimes it's bad for the people yeah. that see the accident coming versus the person who doesn't. Uh, sometimes your body in fluid motion handles impact better than uh, it does in a rigid motion. It's like even in fighting, you know, you see those guys who want to fight. Like, come on, bitch, let's right. fuck and, and, fight. And you're like, oh, this motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, yeah, let your shoulders down. Yeah, you lose. Yeah, just relax, you know, like fucking pa, pa, pa. and you know, yeah. so so you don't want to be rigid, uh, number one. But listen, I have I in my car, I have this. It's you can't just turn it on and go to sleep. You basically, you turn on one button, it controls the speed. You got another button that you know, the lanes come up, and basically you press it at 45 miles an hour to hold with the with the cameras. It'll hold the lane for a certain okay. amount. I call it my bong. I call it my bong hit feature. So basically when I'm driving, it gives me enough time to just like pack, like put, set it all up. Yeah. <laughs> the ganja. <laughs> then, you know, get the lighter. Yeah. Oop, steering. Grab the handle. I got it. I think. <laughs> you deserve it, baby. Come on. Yeah, man. Come on. I love that feature. Um, <laughs> that's in the Acura or the Jeep? Uh, that's in the Acura. Yeah, the Jeep is, uh, oh. you know. It's right, actually now the I, the wife was the wife was my I, the the Jeep was my well I bought it and my, my wife let it was my wife's car and I had the Acura and now I have both cars so I want to get rid of them both and get one really nice car you know right. and, and yeah, I but I have family good. members saying I want the Jeep I'm like I got family members asking for my wife's Jeep um, it, right. it's hilarious <clears throat> yeah dude we'll get into that later yeah. any rate let's move on. Um, Bronny James, heart okay. issue. You know, LeBron James' son had a heart attack, yeah. had a cardiac arrest. Uh, do you think it was from? You think it was from COVID? The vaccine? You think that's a vaccine? Uh, <laughs> cardio? Yeah, you, know, dude, you think this is it? I don't know. I mean, look, I I just know that those kids, man. Nowadays, these kids play basketball year freaking round, man. And I feel like his yeah. dad had, you know, shout out to him trying to keep up with his pops, man, because he's a very good basketball player. But that is a Huge standard, dude, to try to be one of the, you know, your dad is like the greatest basketball player of all time. So I feel like he's trying to push himself beyond, you know, being like yeah. a rich kid. I feel like, look, look at Jordan's kids. They don't give a shit. They, uh, I mean, they, they're good enough to play college. I think one of them played at UCF um, or right. something like that. And the other one's having sex with uh, Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. Or, dude, stand with yeah, I mean, Mike's not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, he, he ain't feeling it. But I mean, they're underachievers. They they set the their role. I am not gonna be that guy. So I'll just be a regular yeah. dude and spend my dad's money and, and whatever it is, right? And, and enjoy the life. And I feel like LeBron's son is probably driven to try to be like him, you know, or, or wants to be great. And you can still be a great person, like somebody great. If you may not be that guy, right? You can't be him again. But you know, he had different motivation. He was broke, right? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. he didn't have the, Did you the have, tiger. It's like, yeah. it's like he didn't yeah. have the eye of the tiger. You know, like Rocky he got all that money, had a robot, he had a big house. Yeah, you know, he didn't uh, give a fuck. That's why Clever Lang beat the fuck out of Rocky because he, he was like, <laughs> "Oh, I got all this money. You know, I can I'm wiping my ass with thousand dollar bills." So, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, it, who, who you're right. I mean, it's interesting that decision. Like, 
you know, it's one thing. Imagine if your pops was like Red Fox, you know, or, you know, somebody like, yeah. you know, my dad was fucking Rodney Dangerfield. Like, would I really want to be a cop? Yeah. Like, you know, you, you look at guys like uh, uh, Chris Farley's brother, you know, is trying right. to follow his brother, you know, and, and you know, why not take advantage right. of that, you know? Uh, but right. yeah, man, it's interesting. He, he, he's definitely, I mean, that's got to be, you know, yeah. what are the odds? I mean, can you imagine if he, he ends up being like the next phenom? Oh my God, the son of a phenom. Uh, right. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I don't, but, but never, you never, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah good for him. He went to USC. That's pretty good. I mean, speaking of comics though, uh, I will say, well, all right. Mason Fryer was a, you know, I'm a nice guy. I met him a few times. Super nice guy down to earth, but he wasn't, yeah. he didn't live up to his pops. He got booed at the Apollo was his last thing. And it's not about the getting booed because his pops got booed. A lot of people get booed, you know? Uh, but it's a fact right. that I don't think he's been at it as much since, right? Like, because that's that's the difference. It's the heart to keep getting up. Like, why would I do that if I was rich? Yeah. Uh, Tony Rock is pretty good. I'll give him props. I feel like in many ways he surpasses Chris just in, like, certain abilities. Not, obviously, legendary status and writing. But he's yeah. really good with his crowd work. His flipping a, a moment, uh, he's a genius. Like he's very, yeah, very good. I haven't seen Chris Farley's brother. Can you think of any other family comedy things like, like not brothers together, but like maybe in different generations? Or like family like members, yeah. Um, I can't think of any. No, other I mean, uh, well, yeah, the, oh! the, the brothers of Gal. Who? Oh, I was gonna say Ben. No, gonna... Ben Stiller and his dad was a comedian, right? Ben. Yeah, his Stiller and Mirror. Were, his the, pops. His right. yeah, his dad. Yeah, his dad was uh was George Costanza's dad in Seinfeld. Right, his dad is Stiller's real father. But yeah, that's not dude. Com- that's not stand up comedy. I, I He's an actor comedy. Com- yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's funny. I never saw Tony uh, Tony uh, Tony Rock. Never saw him. Um, uh, dude, but yeah, I I never saw Farley either. Uh, uh, a couple times, but yeah, it's just got to be weird. Like you know, it's like my here's a weird thing. My father was a soccer goalkeeper. You know, my brother then became a goal. I became a goalkeeper and I'm writing a joke about it now because I'm only five foot eight, you know, for the world of (laughs) soccer, a goalkeeper is basically the forward on a basketball team. It's one of the tallest people on the fucking team. And I'm, you know, know, but my dad had me doing like jumping in sandboxes. You know, we were young. We were jumping in sandboxes. No, my dad was like five, nine, maybe my height, a little tall. He'd have us hanging, dude. He'd have us hanging from fucking the bar. <laughs> like, don't worry, you know, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be six foot two before you know it. So you're just hanging around, you know, oh, <laughs> hoping I get gosh. taller. Yeah, oh, dude. It, it, yeah, it's tough to. I'm trying to write. To, uh... Yeah. Was he? Yeah, what, dude. What, 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 you know. What are you I'm sorry, bro. My bad. My uh, it's like Spanish, Portuguese, Spanish, Portuguese. Oh, oh yeah, that's huge. Portuguese. Oh my god. But, but dude, I don't. I'm. You know, I, I met a lot of my father's family when I went to Europe years ago, and uh, his family yeah. almost could be like we could be like Egyptian or Moroccan, dude. I, I, I would if I took one of those twenty two and me, I wouldn't find out if I'm like, you know, sut part, you know, North African or some shit, you know. What? You know, and, and then maybe I can use the N word. Then I can use the N word all of a yeah. sudden. Yeah. Come uh, on, it'll be, it'll be horrible. <laughs> <like that. laughs> Hell yeah! All right, let's yeah. get. Let's get on with, uh, hey, does age matter when it comes to our politicians? I mean, look at the week we had. Uh, ben rolled Jeez. this fucking clip, first of all, of, of Mitch McConnell. just, And then, of course, I mean. Yeah. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, mm-hmm. We're on a path to finishing the NDA. Uh, good. This week has been good bipartisan cooperation. Good. And okay. a string of uh, 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 oh my god! I feel like he's looking at some chick because her skirt's open, like some chick sitting with a mini skirt. He's like, he can't stop. He's like, you imagine some like Sharon Stone is sitting over there, like looking at him with a pen and paper. Hey, 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 hey. She might be shitting his pants. Anything else you oh. want to say? Oh, yeah, you he might have. Do you want to say anything else to the police? <laughs> yeah, God oh save the God, queen. Just... It would be, it would be, it would be funny if Mitch McConnell said, God save the queen. 
Go ahead, John. Right. <laughs> the presence of a I thought he was saying he's going to get rid of the NBA. The defense appropriations bill like, favorably damn, subject Watch, to Watch, now this is, look, look at this poor lady. I mean. Oh. See this. this is Feinstein, Senator Fein. Look at, I mean, oh, watch this poor Senator. woman. Pardon me. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, to say. I, I would like to support a yes vote on this. Just um, say yes. It provides say, eight hundred and twenty-three billion. That's an increase of twenty-six billion. I thought we had the close-up on it. That sucks. Defense. Oh. And it can't tell which one she's about to fall asleep. Submitted. There she oh, goes. She yeah. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just aye. Great, aye. Senator, Thank you. Senator Durbin. All right. All right. Put her back to sleep. Put her back in the box. Uh, um, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's yeah. almost like here. It's like, it's like, here, Grandma, sign the new will. Right, yeah. right, right. People are making big decisions, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah. Shit. It's about to be out of here. Fucking hell, man. Oh my God! So, yeah. So should there be an age I, I, limit cognitive I, test? I think you're right, man. I feel like it's got to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It needs to be some yeah. type of, and it doesn't have to be bias in it, like like just cognition, straight up. Not even how yeah. much information you know, but how much, yeah. how long can you stay awake? Like, do you know what the hell's going on? How much do you care yeah. about what's going how, on? Because how functional you know, are you? You know, just like a comic, right. you expect the comic to deal with some fucking heckler. I expect my politician to know where to sign, right. where to speak, what to say. You know, yeah. I mean, poor Joe fucking look, look, at, look at our look at Joe Biden falling all over the place and not knowing where to shit, stand. Man. I mean, just... can't even ride his bike. Oh, it's not, but, <laughs> you know, and I see comics too, like, and I won't say names, but like, well, all right, I'll say Carlin before he. I'm like, you know, his it's an audience. It's different, right? When you pay to see something. If you don't mind him looking at his notes and you're his fan, right? That's one thing, you know? And yeah. because these people yeah. are making a choice to, to continue to... So in a way, we're making that choice, I guess, by electing them, but not, you know, like you said, we should know the cognition. That's very important to uh, that well, choice a, because... Yeah. There's a big difference. You and I get hired. We get hired per, per venue, per show. Right. When the the president he gets hired once four years and then he gets you know so the the equivalence would be like you and I getting hired on on contracts over four years, right? You know five you know one right. twice a, you know and then we just we get to do whatever the fuck we want. There's no questioning what we're doing, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. Remember Pablo you know, had his, a thing. Do you remember that when Pablo Francisco? I think he's okay now, but it was like a it was a it was in the news. He had a meltdown, like, right? Like a, a meltdown, like a brain, like almost similar to what happened to Mitch McConnell just there. Like, and he starts saying jokes out of order and like being like, yeah, weird. Yeah, on crazy, stage, yeah. Dude. On stage yeah. in front of people, man. Holy shit. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's cognition. And, and I'm sure he's okay now. I haven't heard, you, you brought, you, know, you brought that up about, no, let me ask you, let me ask you this real quick. One of the last questions. Um, yeah. Oh, no, we do have, uh, we had another show. You know, notes on stage. You know, no, no, right? And right. listen, like you said, unless you're unless you're a headliner saying, "Look, I'm working on a whole new hour." If you don't right. mind, I'm going to look at some of these notes. But but basically, any comic that's doing a show and it's not an open mic should should not have notes on stage. I mean, I'm, I'm with you, man. And I'm one of these, right. you know. Hey, man, I, I'm one of these. Get off my lawn. I guess I've been doing comedy 18 years. So when I see a guy in shorts, unless you're fluffy, uh, but but when I started, yeah. people would criticize you if you didn't have on a suit. If you weren't like kings of comedy dressed up at a club or something like that, people would say that's not how you do comedy. It should be formal wear. So it's, it evolves, I suppose. But, yeah, there's certain things, yeah. man, where it goes back to that be professional, man. You showed up to a job, know your damn jokes, right? Because how can you create the yeah. rhythm necessary, you know, yeah. for a show? Like, especially if you're showcasing, like you said. If it's working out, one thing. But if you're showcasing, you want to keep working here? And you're reading? Get the hell out of here, dude. Are you looking at the notes on your yeah. hand? Ugh. <laughs> oh, There's a comic, a funny comic out of South Florida. He used to play the guitar. He's a funny dude, but he always, 
and, and it was god bless him because he always had the notes in the back of his guitar so he'd go like that uh, and, I, and he was a friend of perry Sachs. i'm bundle and blanking his name but he would do it and you know and perry like yeah but you know it's i'm like dude but he's doing the same jokes for five years i mean it's you know what i mean uh, and, and i have I, I have i have a philosophy that it's like well listen if it's not funny enough to remember it's probably not funny enough to laugh at um, right is sense. this the like, same dude who got like, his ass kicked no, oh, Perry Sachs. Oh, oh, no, no, I thought no, the guy no, was no. playing the guitar again. Why can't I? Rick, Rick Corso. Rick Corso is the guy who, Rick Corso, out of, he's at a cruise ship comic, been around years. Oh, Rick Corso. Okay. Uh, he's out of South Florida. He does Al Pacino, uh, all kinds of great impressions and shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was the headliner that night. So, at any rate, so, um, uh, yeah, so that's that. And our last question to you. Uh, what ha what is up with uh, where was Carly Russell for forty eight hours? If you don't know, Carly Russell was our uh, Jesse Smollett uh, woman from I guess in Georgia, I think it was that claimed that she saw a baby walking on the highway and she stopped and then eventually she got abducted and you know, uh, good looking girl there, uh, you know, probably just looking for attention, but she lied. She uh, she was gone for no one knows. She didn't say where she was for forty eight hours, basically two days. Her boyfriend seemed to have a lot to say, but. Uh, so where do you think she was for 48 hours while she was missing? I have a theory, Sean. man. I'm not big on conspiracies, Dougie. I'm not huge on them. But I feel like she was working with the sheriff. She was working with that <laughs> Alabama sheriff because how did that dude, did you see his suits during the press conferences? That dude was oh. Craig Sager fresh. That dude had on, <laughs> he had some clean ass, yeah. lavender, bright color, suits that he knew black people because he knew black people be watching and we love yeah. those kind of suits man he had his east the best to do these sets so i'm like oh he's doing this because he wants to run for like some type of big government yeah. office and so he hired carly to do this bullshit <laughs> i don't know but i feel like it seems <laughs> like you like from from like attention, you had man. you had me there dude you had me i'm like that sounds like a oh, great I, was fucking, like, bullshit. I, I, I was like yeah what better way to get attention than wearing them fuck we're coming out with them fucking suits you know oh, he was clean, if, if you're, man. dude it, you're, <laughs> how true is that all right you uh, all right like we got you, do you own one no no i i, I own oh. i used to wear suits all every day when i was a financial advisor you know up until 2010 yeah. working in the banks and making a shitload of money uh suits money ties sure. every fucking yeah, day yeah. Now, yeah, but now uh, this is, I show up the client's house like this, you know, I work by referral. Yeah. I work with a select, I work with a select group of people. You know what I mean? I choose them right. and uh, by referral, uh, wealthy. You don't have to impress them. They know you're good. You know, you know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I, I met somebody one time and they're like, you're not wearing a suit. And I'm like, if that's going to be an issue, please, let's just end the, end the meeting today, <laughs> right now. Because um all right let's look at some of these uh stories did you hear everybody here's some stories we're going to go through Ooh. the headlines and get, and get them pretty because we had a little time but uh amazing story scientist brings uh forty six thousand dollar uh forty six thousand year old worm back to life oh shit. and uh and oddly enough i have a hard time getting a heart on in the morning anymore man um, and you know what i heard i heard about this dougie you know what i heard about that worm man what? He's still down to earth 46,000 yeah. years old. He's, uh, that's so stupid. He's humble. So he's stupid. Humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the earthworm, everybody. Come on. He's still down to earth. Yeah. Well, I wrote that. He, he came out there. Who's president? Who's president? <laughs> um, who, who's running the earth? Is a dinosaur, a dinosaur still here? Uh, <laughs> our next story. Uh, Dennis Rodman oh, gets huge tattoo of girlfriend uh, yellow on his face. Why not? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Look I at mean, him with that young ass girl, dude. Oh, I mean, that's a horrible <laughs> tattoo. I mean, yeah. I mean, her face, look, there's more realism on the tattoo than her fucking face. Well, yeah, I mean, and it, it, it makes his face look a lot better. I'll, I'll give him that. Oh, my like, uh, God. <laughs> Dennis is messed you know, up, man. I, dude, I always thought I always thought that when I get older, I just want my face to look like a scratch pad. You know, like like be one of those things like you write all your notes on every day. Like, oh, don't forget to get milk. <laughs> like you an know. old Bible or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh so, man, dude, he's making yeah, fifteen. Yeah. That's the, I made that mistake at fifteen. Well, I got a girl's name on my back uh, when I was fifteen years oh. old. Why is he sixty? He's got to be sixty. Why is he making those kind of fifteen-year-old mistakes? Dude, a, a face tattoo, a face. I mean, if you face run out of tattoo. material, you know, I, I'm going to put your face on my face. 
Oh, you know, listen, God. I want a girl. I, w- I would like to have a girl sit on my face, but whether I want her yeah. on my face. Not that long. Know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what a, you know, like, what a con- has- listen, unfortunately, uh, are you single? You're married now, right? You're a married man, family, right? Oh, uh, yeah, married a couple years. Yeah, it's been, uh, we good. got married during the pandemic. Nobody was. Nice. Well, good. What? Good for you. Congratulations. I'm single for the first time in 30 years, so I have some deal breakers. Yeah, I have some deal breakers. You know, the the loop, the thing in the nose. You know, the the fucking oh, earring, the nose, the nose. Ball? Oh shit. Yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, listen. If I want to, if I want to be with a bovine, you know, if I want to be, you know, <laughs> um, where, where and chest tattoos. Like chick, oh, okay. I was gonna ask you. Yeah. The chicks with That's the big tattoos over their tits. No, nah, we don't right. need any of that. Like you know that. I mean? Can you have some on the ass? Can they have anything on it? Because you know you might get bored back there. Yeah, they can have some on the like some... tra- tramp stamps. Aren't deal breakers? They're not deal breakers. What? They should have a maze, like you know the cereal box mazes. Somebody should put that on the ass. <laughs> yeah. so while you're here. here. <laughs> yeah, while you're here, you can do some yeah. pencil and scratch yeah. it out. Maybe <laughs> maybe you should sell ad space like they do in the toilets when you take oh, a piss on the, on the fucking rest stop. Like that's what women just start doing. Yes. They should like boxers. Boxers put like every every whore should just have like right. you know Bill Bell bonds. You know, <laughs> you know Jack oh, Jack's man. late night liquor store. Yeah, yes. not a bad idea. Oh my god, no, the Bell bonds. Yeah, because that's what I'm going. At. Yeah. You know, you get locked up. You out here with these wild women every every night. Man. Oh yeah. my god, dude. I, I don't even want listen. I don't even want to think about it. I'm uh, all right. Here, speak. This person uh, is figuring out a way. Nurse fired for secret affair with a patient who died during sex in the hospital parking lot. Oh my God. Yeah. Nurses are hot. I mean, nurses can be hot. Um, but you know, here's a guy who's in the hospital. The nurse somehow sneaks him out to the car. They yes. fuck. He dies. All right. Now, can you imagine her? She's dead. The guy's dead. Now she knows how the fuck am I getting yeah. like, how do I explain <laughs> this? You know, she deserves overtime, fuck. man. That's overtime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's serious. That's serious patient care right there, Dougie. Like, look, and, and yeah. you know, I, I pre I appreciate anybody that goes the extra mile. You know, my man was dialysis patient too. Like, that's old, he, man. That dude was yeah, like, yeah. He's he's up there. So uh, you is know it, how he say hello, co- nurse. He said goodbye. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> he came and went. He, you know. He, <laughs> He 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 he's wondering: Is it a copayment? Is that part of a copayment? You know, can I? You know, like, I got some good insurance. You know, goddamn, this is good. Yeah, goddamn, man. Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> I got that good oh, Medicare. I didn't know I got came with all this. Now, now, God, now I'm just wondering because the, she looks pretty. She looks hot. She looks like a sexy nurse. Oh, there must have been other God. sexy nurses that probably saw the same patient and thought the same thing. So I wonder if there was yeah. any others he was probably escaping from. Which probably led to his yeah, death. Yeah, he must have um, had some serious game, man. He must be giving him Jello. I got some extra Jello. Yeah. That guy's <laughs> getting more ass than I ever got uh, out of the hospital. Um, <laughs> mobile meth, mobile meth lab found at Florida Welcome Center on I ninety five. Florida Highway Patrol Damn. and Nassau deputies responding. Yeah, resourcefulness. We're talking Florida, about the man. homeless people. We we're talking about the yes. homeless people, but here's a meth lab at a at a at a rest stop in in Florida. So. And of course, in uh, Florida, man. That's how you say hello. It's right there, man. Welcome. Get some bath salts. Yeah. You know, we teach you, teach you the Florida way, man. You know, I didn't know that was such a big thing. Like people really shit on us, man. You, you didn't. Grow, you're from. You didn't grow up in Florida. I know you spent a lot of time. Yeah, pretty much. No, I did. I I, I grew up in Florida though. I was from New York, but we grew up, up in Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, I didn't guy. know it was such a Florida man or. Like I hear jokes. A buddy of mine, Tom Clark, has a really good joke about um, uh, everybody going to LA from LA to Arizona and talking shit about you bringing LA over here. And the joke is, well, it looked like somebody took a big Florida in LA. <laughs> oh, in Arizona, somebody already took a big Florida in it. Was the joke? But and everybody laughs at the shit. But I'm like, yeah, everybody thinks Florida. I mean, they're right. I I agree. Florida's uh, shitty, but it's home. Like I don't know. I'm like, I, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Is it racist? Yeah, is there, are there drug addicts and you know, whatever? But yeah, dude, it's, I don't know. I, I miss it. I miss these meth heads, um, man. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, you probably haven't been back that much. I see the problem. Oh, is that's, that's up, true, you, too. I haven't been back for a while. Yeah, you no, know, you miss it because, you know, it's like when you break up with a girlfriend, you're thinking about all the good times. You're not thinking about all the times she called you and went through your fucking phone and you know t- tried to, you know, you know, fuck shit, you know, like 
perp- did vindictive things to you. You know, you don't remember that window, shit. You, called me a nigga. Yeah, yeah, scratched oh, your fucking now. car. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, told your okay. told your friends about you come quick. You know, <laughs> tell her friends. Yeah. You know, like, honey, that, that's that's between us. Um, right. you know, you don't I remember that shit. Mike. I'm forgetting. I forgot all that. Now you, yeah. Thank you, Dougie. I'm not going back now. Yeah. Fuck Florida. Nah, dude, don't. I go. Listen, I'm going back <laughs> Monday and next week. And but every time I go back, because I, I drive here in South Carolina, it's tranquil. People don't honk their horns and shit. You, yeah. you know, you, you move along. People are not there. People drive like they're all fucking running for the end of time. They're like, you know what I mean? Like they're all rushing to get on the last fucking lifeboat. I don't know what the fuck is going on in South Florida. <laughs> Everybody's in a fucking hurry. They got to be there before you. And who the fuck? And, and rude motherfucker. And so, so every time I go back, oh, dude, God. you know, I go back and it reminds me of the time the girl scratched my car. It reminds me of the time. Like, I would never oh. go back, you know, so fuck that. All right. So we got to move along here. Right uh, naked woman. Right but but this is you know, California. Uh, uh, naked woman gets out of car at a major Bay Area bridge and starts yeah. firing a gun. This was on. I mean, this, I mean, you know. You talk about you not yet reacting when the guy walked up and picked you up on stage, but people right. are watching this woman like, look at her, and she starts pulling out a gun. They're like, oh my god, look at her! I'm like, bitch, she can turn the gun and point it right at you, you stupid fuck. <laughs> like, like I'm surprised somebody to get out of the car and put you know a fucking ender. You know, because right, I, I was thinking right, to myself, right. I I carry a gun, so if I'm in the car and she's unloading car, I may I may fucking take her down. Yeah, yeah, man, shoot, I mean. You know, and, and if she if she gonna make that ass clap, my she gonna make the gun clap too. You know, she's making everything. Yeah. <laughs> she looked like she had a nice Simi- body. I mean, I guess that's what I would been focused on. That she would have shot me. Well, that's what I, I think like, a lot of guys were. They didn't care a fuck. They they were look. They started. They couldn't. They couldn't get their gun. They're too busy jerking off in the front seat. Right. You know, hey man, they hey, the hey Sean, pass they the tissues. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly, man. My dumb ass wife be like, don't look over there. And it teaches out. I don't know if she got a gun. I got to look to see if she's got a gun. Yeah. It's like, don't you yeah. try to look at the titties. You know? I mean, that's a distraction. Oh. A naked woman shooting off a gun. Guys are just sitting there going, wow, she's got a gun. And she's naked. They're, they're not <laughs> like, good? you know what I mean? If, if yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, we're going to skip through something. No, they're a Japanese kabuki yeah. star, Ichiwa Enosuke, yeah. indicted for assisting his parents double suicide. Boy, this guy really takes oh. life to art. Art, you know. Yeah. I mean, Dude, Japanese you know, the parents people, are like, yeah. yeah, they do it right. Like, the parents are like, yeah. who can we find uh, to help us in the, <laughs> in the Haraku? You know, oh, Asan, he, he, he actor, he played someone who killed himself. <laughs> Maybe we ask our uh, son. He got, yeah, he dun, got dun, dun. Like, man. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Like, look, when, if a Japanese homie tells you he's sorry, he means it. Because they, they, like, they, they'll take their life for some, you know, they, they hold themselves in some condemnation for their guilt. So I'll be like, look, yeah. man, you know, I got some Japanese homies. I'll be like, look, I, 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 it's okay. <laughs> Don't feel yeah. bad about what yeah. you did, man. Yeah. What the hell? Strike two one, dude. God, look, yeah, just relax, yeah. okay? We, we can make mistakes. <laughs> it's all good. God, yeah. Lee. Oh. God almighty. But the, you know, the, it's funny because the the guy's like, "Well, I'm the be- I am the beneficiary on your life insurance." <laughs> point oh, to, point oh, to, uh, see? Yeah, you know, <laughs> fuck yeah, of course. You know. Oh my um, God! Oh, good, you're dead now. I take everything. I no longer be actor. <laughs> I sell Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip that story. By the way, um, Trump's White House doc turned GOP rep detained in Texas at a rodeo amid chaos. See, now this is a funny story because here you have a story where the uh, former uh, White House doctor, he was uh, Obama's doctor, and he was um, uh, uh, Trump's doctor. Uh, I, th- I think maybe it was uh, fucking Bush's dog. I can't remember. He's any rate. So this guy's, you know, he's at a rodeo, you know, and there's a 13 or 14 year old girl that had needs medical attention. Somebody he knew who was a nurse grabs him, says this girl needs medical attention. And then when the cops see this guy fondling this young teenager, they think he's, you know, Kevin Spacey oh. or something. And they fucking arrest the guy. <laughs> He's like, "I'm a fucking doctor." Well, why you got her? Why do you got your lips on her titties? Listen, it's it's a very it's <laughs> very it's a very new technique of reviving right. somebody. It's called the mo- I'm motorboating her. The nipple. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. oh, motorboating has been proven to bring young women back to life. <laughs> uh, Dude, yeah, I, I watch these like videos online where these people fuck with cops, 
And a lot of cops don't know like the law low key. Like they just be locking people up. Uh, it's actually, there's like a whole dark side of the internet where you watch people, their whole job is to fuck with cops and make them yeah, try to get yeah. them to arrest them uncivilly or some shit like that. But yeah, this dude's got a little lawsuit on hands. But the, hopefully the girl was okay. I mean, you know. Yeah, I think eventually, good. eventually they, they realized their mistake and, you know, he, but I'm saying he must have felt like a black, he must have felt like a black man though, being mis, mis you know, right. like all of a sudden they just assume the guy's robbing the, you know, the, the fucking place. <laughs> Which uh, which leads me to the, 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 the this is a great story. The last story: Georgia cop surprises boy with PlayStation after police were called on him oh, for offering to do yard work. Young black kid walking around a neighborhood just trying to raise money, offering to do yard work. So the neighbors got hey, this guy's scamming the neighborhood, and uh, realizing what happened, the cop ended up buying the guy uh, the kid a, a PlayStation uh, for Beautiful. you know to show him that not all fucking people are you know ridiculously scared. I call it scared, fearful. Uh, uh, who knows? A lot of this shit now. People are all fucked up. They, they don't know what to think anymore. Can't trust that news. Me, you can't trust what. You... Uh, yeah, that made me so. cry, man. I don't know if I got a lot of estrogen now because I'm getting older. But yeah, I, I cry and shit like that, man. I, I'm. Thank you for showing me that. that I, you sent me the video, and you know, I cried like a little bitch, man, because I'm getting up there in age, and when I see sensitive yeah. stuff, I I watch a lot of news. In fact, this is the most news I've experienced being on your show, man. Wow. I don't. I I read my Bible and I watch cops beat up people on, on YouTube, but other than that, I don't watch shit. So, yeah, man, that was a beautiful news story. I'm glad we should have more news like that. That's very nice. It should be. You know, it's a great story. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, and, you know, I, I wanted, and, and to me, I wanted to talk about the Chinese guy real quick. I wrote a joke. He yeah. Told me the, the Chinese oh, yeah. Story. Okay. The guy, he dropped oh, his uh, yeah, the Chinese write... guy, dropped his pants. Okay. I'll let you bring it yeah. in. You got it. Well, yeah, the, uh, this is actual singer detained for dropping his shorts on stage. He's Chinese. He didn't take his underwear off. He's not crazy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. At a festival yeah, in China's know, City of Rock. You know what his name was? I researched no. it. His real name, I swear, I'm not bad. His name was Ding. Everybody Ding. saw Ding's dog. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Everybody saw Ding. His real name is Ding. I'm not bullshit. And check, when I read the story on CNN, his name is Ding. And uh, now he's going to change his name to Ding-a-Ling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ding-a-Ling. Well, oddly enough, <laughs> if you want to be scientific about this, uh, Sean, if you want to be scientific about it, if his name is Ding, Ding is a Ding is not a protrusion. It's an intrusion, meaning an innie, not an Audi. Oh. So if your car got dinged, it doesn't like bulb out. It bulbs in. So they didn't actually see his oh. Ding-a-Ling. So you, we may have to oh. name him ding listing ding like ding dingy oh. dingy dingy You know, Dingy no Dang. Dong. Yeah, so I I will pay the counter. I will be the, uh, you know, Saturday Night Live, Jane, you ignorant slut, point, counterpoint on that story. So, all right. Well, that was great. Um, All right. Um, All right. Let's do, let's associate. We're going to wrap the show up. Let's associate the game of wordplay, word associate. I'm going to say five words, uh, uh, basically all words uh, in this case. And you tell me the first thing that comes to mind or thought or story or, and uh, that's it. Nothing, nothing. There's no yeah. wrong answer. In other words, Mr. Grant, uh, are you ready? Sir. Yes, sir. Satisfying. Uh, the first word is satisfying. 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 Definitely uh, an applause break. Love to hear mm. people uh, get together, laugh, and then applaud. Not just myself, but anytime it happens at a comedy show, whether it's for me or for another performer, it's the most, because all these people clapping and doing that didn't plan it. They did it together. And uh, it's it's proof to me that the soul exists because that is the combining to be able to make people do that all at once together is proof that we have a soul that can be connected through laughter. Beautifully said, and yeah, th- that is amazing, right? When people ask me why I do this, it's f- those moments, like wh- where you say something and, and just ev- like you said, collectively everybody is in agreement, and you know everybody's in that moment of like this is where we're at all together. Couldn't say any better. All right. Our next word is proficiency. Ooh, proficiency. Uh, yeah, I, I like, uh, you know what? That makes me think of just being on time, okay? I don't like uh, people who don't respect people's time. Get there early, okay? If you can be there yeah. early, why not, okay? <laughs> Jesus woke up early. Moses got up early. Abraham got up early. Get up early. Be there early. Be on time. Respect time. That's all you got. I, I I couldn't agree more. 
And like you were saying earlier about, you know, as a comic, a professional, professionals develop proficiency in certain characters yes. and behaviors, meaning, meaning you don't, you don't, you're not just doing something because you're thinking of doing it. You're doing it right. because it comes naturally to you. You become proficient in something because you've done it so much. And it's, it's a secret. Like a proficiency is right up there with uh, continuity. Like, you know, doing something right. all the time, doing it right and kind of profi develops proficiency. I love that type of uh, stuff. Ooh, Our next word is um, res uh, respect. 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 Yeah. What do I think when I think of respect? Yeah, man. Respect. Uh, res uh, I guess everything's comedy because I'm talking to Dougie right here. But yeah, man. Respect <laughs> the light. Respect. The <laughs> it was all yeah. those the time. But respect. Yeah. Respect. Uh, you know, have respect for whatever venue it is that you're in or whatever it is your endeavor in life, respect it enough to research it. If it's comedy, if it's something else, don't think that uh, this microwave success that they're selling you is real. Uh, you can maybe get a bunch of views or a bunch of stuff at one time or do some, you know, stroke of luck, but to be able to sustain and to really make a mark in this business over a long period of time, respect it and respect the game, respect yourself and, and work hard. Absolutely. All right, uh, two more words. Uh, tolerance. Sure. Tolerance. Tolerance. Yeah. Um, I I don't I can't eat. Uh, I can't tolerate certain foods, man. Uh, my at this age, if I eat cheese, <laughs> yeah, uh, or anything, uh, I just oh my, I can feel my stomach. Like yeah, I have a low tolerance for anything that's not uh, like the five. So you can't eat like pizza. Eat. You can't oh, eat pizza. Oh man, no, no. I mean, I, I, no. I, I, I'll do it, but I'll have my tongues first. Like I have to. And I oh, okay. Have Is candy the, tongue. Got you. Because there's, yeah. there's there's a coping mechanism. And our last word is uh, deservant. Deservant, deservant. You, you, uh, you, Dougie, are deservant of all the praise. I thank you for showing me and showing a lot of guys the way to consistency, man. And, and I love what you're doing with the podcast, and I'm glad it inspired me to find one because I love how you found your own angle. It's not the show that you do is different than any other show I've been on, and you're deserving of all the praise. I found that my own lane with the Bible study thing, and it's, it took me a while because mm -hmm. I was like, what do I like? And I love how you merge what you like, news, with comedy, and, and get to know your own fellow comics. So thank you for making me be part of that, man. You deserve praise. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Great dude, man. Always been. And, uh, uh, how, how, hold you in my highest regards, my friend. That's uh, you are deserving of that respect and honor. So uh, everybody, uh, where can they find you, Sean? Where can uh, comics and uh, or our fans find you and get more of you? Yes, guys, follow me. Uh, I have a website, SeanGrant.net. You can also follow me on Instagram at I am Sean Grant and some other stuff. But also follow at Comedian Bible Study. This week, Jeff Die uh, joins me. Uh, we have the pre-recorded episode. But on the IG Live, which I allow, which I get to do live with my buddies around the country, I'm having the always dangerous Dougie Almeida. Uh, and that's going to be IG Live um, on Wednesday, uh, August 1st. But it'll be replayed on the Community Bible Study page. So you can always go back and check it out. Cool. Uh, and it'll be also on StreamYard, Facebook, and, and YouTube Live as well. So, yeah. There we go. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's our show for today. I want to thank Sean Grant for joining us today, of course, and please check him out. Uh, me, of course, I'm at Funny Fiduciary on Twitter and on Instagram. I mean, on uh, the, the, the Twitter, Twitter and uh, TikTok. Yeah, about IG, I'm at Dougie Dangerous, so please go there. I got to be in Florida next week. I'm going to be on August 9th. I'm going to be at the Turtle Tavern headlining that room. 10th, 11th, and 12th. I'm going to be at Gregory's Comedy Club in Cocoa Beach. Go to DougieAlmeida.com for more dates. I'm going to be in Helium in St. Louis. I think it's the 17th of August through the uh, 20, not the 20, 19, 20, whatever. It's the 17th, 18th, 19th in Helium in St. Louis, uh, opening for Steve Chirino. Thanks, guys, so much. God bless. Stay well. And we'll be back in a couple weeks with Steve, with uh, actually Steve Mudflap McGrew and Brian Dunkelman. See you then.